that's another piece that was presented at the conference and Brother Ashad writes about it in the final call. Um, what role should the black arts or arts play in fashioning the future of the black world or a black agenda? Oh man, well when I think of art, I think of art with a purpose. Mm -hmm. So in other words, the artist is able to put together the picture, the dance, the story, the song in such a way that an ordinary individual can understand right. what's going on around them. In lieu of that, you have people who are lost or you have individuals who can manipulate mm -hmm. people with incredible talent right. to do what has always been done, work against oneself. Right. And so what role can the poet play? Mm -hmm. The poet can continue to articulate the truth as he or she sees it. The artist can be able to paint that picture that captures this moment that no words can explain. A great artist can capture that mm -hmm. to where future generations can say, this is what was going on. And those in the present can be inspired by that. So in just the same way, many people are inspired by artists' ability to capture the pain and despair of a community right. through articulating the gunshots, the incarceration, the homelessness, the poverty. And they put it in a way that is appealing mm -hmm. to so many that they will package it up and say it's more um, um, cool right. to be shot or to go to jail mm -hmm. or to sell drugs because of a song I heard. Right. I grew up in Northeast Denver. We did not know about drive-by shootings. Right. We did not know about the drug trade and all those things on a large scale until NWA came out with that song, Gangster Gangster. Mm -hmm. They painted the picture. Well, today I believe a new picture can be painted. Right. A new song can be sung. A, a, a new sculpture can be sculpted. Right. One of the key elements of an advanced society is the way it appreciates and contributes to the art. True. When you start defunding art and music and, and creativity, then what are, you, what are you focusing on? War, mayhem, chaos, chaos et cetera. Mm -hmm. So the role arts can play is by making, an, making sure that there's an environment where art can flourish. I'm a big proponent of the arts. Absolutely. Now here's a question because you, you touched on a few um, things that we would uh, deem negative, a lot of the um, art particularly in, I won't call it hip hop because hip hop is something else, but in rap music is uh, uh, misogynistic, um, like you, you talked about the gang banging, the glorification of that sort of thing. In fashioning and forming a black agenda, should we in any way censor that sort of uh, art? Whenever you censor an artist, you're not getting art. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not against what creative individuals are doing with their talent. I am against how it's being manipulated right. by a few that make it to where others are not able to add their voice right. to the discussion or to the dialogue because that's all you see on those few outlets is a lens shaped in that stereotypical money-making right. um, um, pattern, and it's not new. Stereotypes have always been profitable right. for someone else. If you look Absolutely. at all the way up until the Cosby Show, most mm -hmm. of the things you saw on television were stereotypical. Well, I'm into broadening mm -hmm. the, 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 the environment to where you have multiple voices. I listen to and I appreciate the music that is even being played today. Right. But I can censor and make decisions about what I'm listening to. I don't believe that's the case for a lot of young people right. whose <laughs> thoughts and ideas are being shaped and molded. 
So I can listen to a Snoop Doggy Dog or a 50 Cents or an Eminem or whoever and appreciate what they're saying as art. Right. On the other hand, I don't think my children have that same capacity to do that. So um, I, w I would never censor, mm -hmm. but I do know that there are a lot of artists that are not being um, heard mm -hmm. because they're being isolated. And I do agree with um, KRS-One and others who understand the difference between hip hop and rap. Absolutely. I believe hip hop is a culture. Yes, sir. Uh, hip hop is something you live, rap is something you do. Right. But however you do it, I know it's a part of a bigger, a bigger pie. So, I mean, I appreciate what, the, what, what young people are doing and how they're saying and what they're articulating. I just want them to be able to broaden right. or have other options. Right, absolutely, and, and, and I agree with you um, wholeheartedly. I, I don't believe in censorship, uh, censorship as well, um, but I think that um, you know, as we develop this agenda, this, and I, and I say black, but I, I want people to understand that when I mean black, I don't uh, mean just black people. Um, black, in my mind, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches, is universal because we all descended from that, whether we're black, brown, red, yellow, or white. But that agenda is universal. But in developing that, that our thinking should go up so high to where we will be able to do, as you stated, be able to censor um, in our own minds that which we deem as art, that which we deem as real because I, I agree with you a lot of our young people can't discern what's art and what's real they don't realize that uh, a rap cd in 2008 is just like a movie in in a, is a, <laughs> in a it, sense it, 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 it's just straight up entertainment but they can't discern the uh the reality from the art well i mean when i was growing up i wanted some star sunglasses like bootsy right you know? <laughs> <laughs> i wanted you know, I saw people on the stage in a diaper, in Parliament, <laughs> in the Funkadelics, you know. Telling your age, brother. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you, you know, I know that art plays a role in shaping views in society. Right. And I'm, I'm just sad that so many of our people feel like a rites of passage is going into a prison industrial complex. Right. When I understand how that came about and how it perpetuates you know, itself. Yes, sir. And that is one of the things I asked Tom Feelings, who was an artist who did incredible work. He's no longer with us, but I remember asking him, I said, well, how do we um, get our young people to appreciate fine art? And he said, you start exposing them to fine art. Mm -hmm. And then when they see something that is not as exquisite, Right. They'll be able to recognize right. that. Right. Elijah Muhammad said, you don't condemn a dirty glass. You just sit a clean glass up next to it yes, and let sir. the person decide. Right. What we're seeing is the, monopo the monopoly of those who will just present a dirty glass. Right. But people are not able to see a clean right. glass. They're not because, even clean I glass mean, we've got Common, we've got Most Deaf, we've right. got Dead Prez, we've got KRS One, we've got Apostle, we, we've got ETEF right. right in our community. Right. We've got Ashara in, the, in Cafe Nuba, we've got all kinds of creative expression that um, is here. Right. And you've got to seek it out just like good food. Absolutely. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> <laughs> now, I got to touch on some of the leadership because we, we mentioned our Elijah Muhammad. We mentioned the minister for our but I got to talk about um, my main man, one of, one of the coldest um, pastors in America, in my view, and that's the Reverend Jeremiah Wright. Now, <laughs> <laughs> it reads here on the evening of November 22nd, the Institute of the Black World held Legacy Award Ceremony, honoring those consistently on the front lines of the struggle for black liberation. Among those honored was Reverend Jeremiah A. Wright. After graciously thanking many of those joining him on the stage, he delivered special words of thanks and appreciation on behalf of black people for Minister Farrakhan and the two, and the 